right, welcome to Dynamo Dynamics, your goals to digital dominance. I'm Danny Perry, your host for this unique fusion of soccer and technology innovation. With me today, as always, is our wizard of technology support, Kai Peterson. Kai, you ready to talk some Dynamo soccer, uh, among other things? Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to get into it. We had a good game this weekend. Um, we can start from the first minute. <laughs> um, we, uh, Do we you can... really want to start from there? Well, I think that's how we have to. <laughs> Well, yeah. Hey, before you do that, let me read a few stats first. Okay. So, I know this breaks all video protocol, but I've got to break out my cell phone. Please note the game footage featured in this video is the property of its respective copyright owners, and it's used here for educational and discussion purposes only under fair use policies. So, 15 shots for the Dynamo to two for uh, San Jose, eight shots on target, two for San Jose, 82% possession, uh, 748 passes for the Dynamo versus 174 with 90% passing accuracy. Uh, you had the two red cards, of course, that ended up against San Jose, uh, 10 corners for the Dynamo versus one. So I know we talked a lot about corners last week when they conceded six. Yeah. They reduced that number, but what happened? So the first minute, they, San Jose gets a corner. And like we said last week, it's we can't concede corners because all it takes is one to score. And they took advantage of it. It was I think it was a 59. So it was less than a minute when they took it and it scored. And it's you can't concede them. You, you, you really have to try not to because the more they, it just creates more opportunity. It's always a shot inside the box, basically. Yeah, set pieces are always dangerous. They gave up a set piece in the first minute of the game. Yeah, that's not what you want to see. Just coming out of the gate, that's not what you want to see. You want to see just, the, we couldn't even get into the flow of the game. We couldn't even pass the ball around a little bit, get our players warm, like just ready. And there was just instant set piece corner, scored. And then I kind of saw that and was a little worried because what we said it just only takes one, but we turned it around. We did, we did. So there were a lot of changes to the formation this go, go around, or not to the formation, they played the same 4-2-3-1. However, um, they brought in Ferreira up top. Yeah. Uh, Karaskia was back in the lineup. Bassi was back in the lineup as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and one change at the back, I can't remember exactly uh, who that was, but do you think that had a difference? Did that make a difference to that level of possession is is crazy. The number of shots, everything was was really was flowing, higher. and they scored two goals, which is matches their highest output of the season. So, did those changes it, really make that much of a difference? It's hard to tell because San Jose did get a red card fairly early on. I think the thirty fourth minute, fourth, yeah, thirty fourth minute. It was their striker though, so it really shouldn't have had so much of an impact. Like if it was a defender, yeah, we should be peppering the goal. We should get in those positions. But um, with the striker being out, it's not too bad. But we, I'm glad to see we did have more scoring opportunities. Um, I, yeah, it's hard to tell the change. It's hard to tell if that one striker made. He did have. He did get some shots off. He did like. He did well. He did that bicycle kick. That pretty pretty intense. It was a. It was close. Close for a bicycle kick. <laughs> that was pretty spectacular, actually. Yeah. Uh, but the Dynamo defense is still, that seems to be the consistent theme this season so far. Definitely. They're up to fifth in the table on 10 yeah. points. Uh, and they're scoring a few goals, not a lot, but yeah. uh, but enough. And But their defense seems to be relatively solid all the way across the yeah. board. I mean, Clark, I mean, even though, granted, he did give up a goal in the first minute, it is, he's playing consistent. I mean, yeah. he's not giving up two to three. This past game is kind of a night off for him. I mean, he, after that really first... Was. After that first minute, they had one other shot, and it. Yeah, he was it, back there. He was a cup I, of tea, yeah. doing much of nothing. I, yeah, I saw him go up to the midfield, pass the ball a little bit. Like he, he was just relaxing. Yeah, not much for him to do this yeah. game, but the rest of the defense did step up uh, per per usual. Yeah. So let's talk about the goals. So they've uh, the Dynamo trailed basically the entire match yeah. up until the last 10 minutes. And then again, Ferreira followed rapidly by another red card oh, yeah. in Escobar. No, 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 actually it was no, in the, the goal, goal, then goal, red card. Goal, red card. I think so. the, the last red card is more out of frustration yeah. from their player. It was kind of uncalled for in my opinion. It was just an aggressive tackle where it wasn't much going there with that it, he really wasn't going for the ball it looked like but yeah the, the two goals were good to see 
But it did concern me a little bit that we played almost 40 minutes, 45 minutes without a goal. Mm-hmm when it was um they had one man down like we should i feel like you should really take advantage and because i mean we scored and we had to run and get the ball out of the net and and bring it back to the midfield because we needed to score again like you you have to take advantage of the 11 on 10 and but thankfully they did we did yeah thankfully they did we we did it we did i did see some good opportunities um it was hard though that san jose was playing very defensive Mm. They had their back line. It was hard to get the ball inside the box and get a really good shot. I, no- I noticed we did take some shots outside the box. Some of them actually looked uh, decent. Um, I know Brad Smith, the defender who scored last week, he actually had one that was, it was a screamer. He, it was, he has like a rocket for a leg. It was, well, when, it's funny you mention that because once he came on, uh, you started seeing the crosses go in. Yeah. And the, uh, before that, there was no width to the yeah. Dynamo lineup. But that it, seemed to have opened things it very, up pretty it seemed, it seemed like we were just trying to play through the middle a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. And I did see the wingers were open a lot. They could create chances just even if they are crossing the ball in. It, it, it's, it's something. I mean, just like the corner, they, they scored off a corner. That's just crossing the ball in. I mean, it is a set piece. You, do, you can get in better positioning then. But um, I'd like to see more of those, more crosses come in for our strikers. And even an attacking midfielder to come up, especially when we're up a player but it's very it's very helpful to have extra bodies agreed agreed so we've checked off concede less corners but can we check off concede or check off uh don't concede goals from corners this time around uh it's i mean i i I don't know are the numbers i don't know how many corners we've given up all season compared to goals but i mean given one away it's eventually going to happen. Like we, like we kind of said it last week. We were just like too many. Also last week we didn't really. I think we had one or two last week, and this week we had more. So you know, same thing might happen next week where we only get a few corners, but we take advantage of it mm-hmm. and we score. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's hard to really say if that. I mean, I, I I'm glad that we we didn't concede more, but also we dominated possession. Mm-hmm. They really didn't have the opportunity to get in our final third and score especially with our pass accuracy is what really surprised me 90 percent is stellar pretty incredible pretty that's incredible. with yeah 700 passes or almost it really almost 800 eight, eight, really 800 that's very few balls that were intercepted so agreed but if i had to ask you which goal did you like best uh definitely the second <laughs> definitely definitely the second i mean he's a defender he steps up he just smashes it in it's a tough angle and he did his job. You know, the crazy thing, though, is their goalkeeper, uh, Yarbrough, made a spectacular <laughs> save for, for, for right before he smashed that into the, he smashed it in on the rebound. And, uh, but the save before that was, that was yeah. pretty incredible. He, their, their goalkeeper had a, a lot of good saves. He, um, not, not too many, I don't think, were very worrisome for him, but they, he still did his job. Like that corner that we, the header, I thought it was a goal, yeah. and he saved that. And it is tough to recover from a rebound, but hey, it went, it went in our favor, so yeah. I'm not complaining. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So great game by the Dynamo yet again. Uh, they are in great form. Three wins uh, in the league so far this season. One draw and one loss. They're up to fifth in the table in the Western Conference. Uh, so everything is looking good, but here we go next week. We have Chicago coming in, another yeah. team kind of like San Jose. Yeah, not winning a lot of games, but scoring score. a lot of goals. Yeah, I think I think we. It's hard to tell after this week because they were a man down for an hour in this game. But I mean, from what I saw, we really dominated the game. We controlled it. Um, we put more shots on target, which. I was actually more worried about this week because I was, I was thinking San Jose was going to just counterattack, always have the ball, always press. Because if they're getting shots off there and they're scoring, they have to score somehow. I wasn't familiar with their play style, but we really control the ball very well in the midfield, and even our defense is strong. So I think it's really good to see just us have more shots on target and create more chances. I do want, like I said, I want to see more crosses. I'm not too worried about Chicago. They're in, pretty poor form right now more crosses i read in the uh, post match that the dynamo had 39 crosses in this game did you mm. see that many did you count I it, it seems that it seemed, number seems high i don't know what they're considering a cross <laughs> <laughs> and then that stat wise um 
because really what I saw is us really just, I mean, maybe they're considering like a, a lob through ball or maybe just kind of just dumping it down in the box, but I'm thinking more, get a little bit wider. Um, yeah, we'll cut chances. that number in half. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure about how, yeah, how, they how they're determining that, but it seemed like we played more central, which I do like. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you just have to. I feel like if you're going to play central, you got to get the one-two quick passes and create opportunities like that. Also, the rebound goal is positioning. That's a big key. And if you're going to play through the through more central, you have to have good positioning and yeah. um, and make those runs in the middle. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and uh, we have to have a good striker or even a a winger who knows how to get in, fall through behind, and just play, get in good positioning for a potential rebound goal or just even potential pass it back and score. But what do you, what do you think about next week? Are you? Um, I'm thinking that I'm sticking with this Dynamo train right now. They are rolling and they are playing great defense. They are scoring enough goals. So Kai, I think I'm gonna stick with them one more one more round. I'm not sure if we're ready to make predictions yet, but uh, <laughs> but my prediction was pretty solid last yeah. week. I think it was. I should have stuck with you. I should have stayed with the two one. But I was I was really um, I was really banking on our defense. But I mean, hey, we we got the job done. Clean sheet again, then. So we're we're going for let's uh, hope for a clean sheet next yeah. week. I think that was your prediction last uh, last go round because they have been playing so solid. But uh, just that first minute. Yeah. <laughs> the first minute. Yeah, that's, that's, that's scary, the yeah. first minute. But we got our composure back, yeah. turned, got our players settled, and it was nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I told you earlier, Chicago Fire, they have a former Champions League winner in Shakiri. Oh, Liverpool. Wow. Liverpool. 2019, yeah. You're bringing the Premier League into this, right? Or you're, <laughs> you're bringing the European <laughs> leagues into this. Yeah. You're going to make... Well, you know, we're on the same team right now with the Dynamo, but when we talk European football, we're on opposite sides of the spectrum here. And same team. Yeah. <laughs> the Arsenal versus uh, uh, Bayern in the Champions League is coming up in about eight days as well. Yeah. So we will probably be on opposite sides of the fence. We will definitely be on opposite <laughs> sides of the fence then. Yeah. I mean, it's only Champions League. Yeah. Uh, well, only, only the biggest, <laughs> biggest <sporting>. club <laughs> soccer event in the world. Well, I'll try to convert you between now and then, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll let y'all know how it goes as well. But um, so your prediction, actual prediction for uh, Dynamo versus the Chicago, not scratch that, Chicago Fire versus the Dynamo. This is a road game. So. Yeah, um, I think I'm going to go 2-1 Dynamo this week. Um, they do, Chicago, they can score. Same mm-hmm. thing with San Jose. Um, I'm not sure if San Jose would have put more shots on target, put more shots, just had more possession if they'd played a full 11 the whole game. So I'm, I'm just going to stick with 2-1 this week. Um, I think Chicago, they've been scoring like two or three, but they've also, they've been conceding a lot. Yes, I know they conceded 13 on the season. So. Yeah, they, they just came off a loss to Atlanta, and um, they gave up three. three. Yeah, three nil. So, but Atlanta's can score. Yes. They've, they've proven themselves. So I'm going to go 2-1 this week. 2-1, 2-1. I think I will take your line from last week and go 2-0. Two 2-0. Nil. Two nil. Two yeah. nil. The, the, the clean sheet is coming. The clean yeah. sheet should have been this week. So, uh, and with Chicago being kind of in the form where they are shipping goals um, and our defense being as solid as it is, I think this is the week. That 2-0 yeah. score line is going to come into play. Uh, it could definitely happen, yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. So, uh, what else do we want to talk about as far as the Dynamo are concerned? You know, you know, we haven't talked any tech this week. How do we equate <laughs> this match to to technology to what we do? They had a plan. They came out with the same formation. They stayed, yeah. uh, even though they were playing against a team with a four three three. They or uh, San Jose came out with a four three three. A little bit, a uh, little bit different than what they've been seeing uh, from mm-hmm. other teams this year. Uh, so they stuck with their plan even after the disaster right yeah. at the front. So what, what do you think? How, how can we tie that into what we do? How, does that make technological sense at all? <laughs> um, I mean, consistency, I guess. Um, I could say like consistency and backups. 
I mean, you got to have a. That, gotta, they brought in their backups. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true, but I mean, we're we're not just switching just because if something hits the fan. Yeah. We're gonna we can't just change right away. Um, got to stay consistent. Do um, do what you know. Don't don't go crazy and jump out and research and try to get everything try to stay up to date if you if you have a plan you can stick with the plan i think um yeah a plan can always be modified yeah but you, it, if you have a plan to yeah. work with from the start i think foundationally uh that's very important and i think that that's what they did uh, yeah they, there's this four two three one seems to be their preferred formation maybe something's going to change when uh herrera comes back yeah um and when they solidify on who their striker is going to be up front but up until the up until then it seems like they have the plan yeah they're working the plan and they're making adjustments as they go along yeah and I, I really think that um i don't think that they should ever change their formation to play another team because i mean we talked about this a couple of weeks ago in my byron <laughs> roadmap to disaster <laughs> yeah it is a roadmap to disaster because then you're not playing your game you're trying to fit into the other teams yeah formation and their play style and you just if you stick with what you know you should be set you got to prepare yeah how much out thinking yeah or don't out think yourself yeah right? exactly right and i think i think when you when you switch formation i mean these games are happening weekly so you don't really have that much time to really get something locked in and uh locked into place and have your players really comfortable so i think just say i mean the four two three one's working why why change it stick with it let's keep let's keep it going I agree. I agree. So that's where we are. Uh, we have Chicago coming up. Uh, two games on the road uh, to uh, over the next couple of weeks. So we've made our predictions. I'm going to nil. Kai is going to one. And we'll see how that all pans out for next week. So, Kai, I always feel like I'm forgetting something. Uh, what am I forgetting here? Yeah. If y'all could uh, like, follow, um, stay up to date with all of our social medias and um, Turn your notifications on. We'll be posting these weekly and stay tuned. All right. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for this uh, episode of Dynamo Dynamics. Hope you enjoyed and we will see you next week.